Hello, I'm A1 Sirius, and you are welcome to this Blender tutorial on uh, creating fluid simulations with particles. I'll open up this uh, one file here that I have uh, made some preparations in. And I, if you're viewing this and have no knowledge of the flu fluid simulation system, I suggest that you uh, view some of the previous videos in, in that series. Uh, in, in the Blender Physics series that I have created. And I will just use the screencast keys because I'm notorious in forgetting to tell you what I am actually doing. So um, let's look at this. I've selected domain and go into edit mode and you can see that this is just a, a box uh, and that's our domain. A cube and then we'll back up. I'll go to um, object mode, and I've, as you can see, I've, I've baked this already. Can uh, change to uh, wire, wireframe mode, so it becomes a little bit more obvious maybe what's happening. And um, we can step down here, and uh, this one here is the fluid object. That's the domain, and here's the the new kid on the block. The mesh object that has the particle system that is that is part of the fluid simulation with particles. So we can see here we have fluid and it's called particle. And um, I've chosen floats. I've only talked about floats in this. Um, it has to have the same cache as the or should have preferably uh, as the fluid domain. And it needs to be in the same layer. If I move it over, we have, we can just step forward here. So you can see that the floaters are here. I'm dropping this, this fluid and the floaters are with it. Then we can turn on uh, this mode here, uh, the solid mode. And if I were to move this object here to another layer too, then the particles will move together with it. So you're depending on having, you know, the, the layer at least visible for it to work. So I'll just uh, move that back to layer number one. Okay, there you go. And I'm just keeping this one here as a, a size reference because we'll we'll look at that a little bit later. Um, and to just to see what what these floaters do, let's just step through this bake here. Let's see how they when the when the fluid hits the bottom, you can see how they are you know continuing down there's a certain amount of inertia here and uh, I'll just step through this frame by frame and the fluid starts to billow and uh, then the floaters st start to float back up to the surface of the liquid so you can see that that's kind of the general behavior of, of um, the fluid particles and before we move on to the next file, I would just like to show first we'll choose no yes, choose this one here. And you can decide that the global positioning of the object because here I'm using the object renderer that we're rendering an object and here's the, the blue sphere is what I'm rendering, what I'm using to render these objects down here. So if I change it to halo, then, you know, it will be halo points that are uh, rendered. And we can look at that and we can actually render that. And that just looks like that. Uh, so you can, you know, you have a lot of options. You can create a lot of um, um, different types of objects that, that um, will appear on the surface.
but I've chosen objects in this case. So, there, okay. So let's, let's look at this here when you look, when you check this box, the global box, then the generated particles will follow the location of this, this object here. And if you use the rotation, we'll look at that later because you can't hardly see it when it's just a monochrome. And scale is also it's the same thing here. If you scale it up, okay. Uh, probably turn. I did turn that off. I think. Yeah. Now it's nothing happened, right? And then I turn it on, and there you go. It influences the the scale of the the object. So if I just have it turned on and then I scale it down and see what happens. So those are some manipulations you can do with the actual object. If you have you have that mesh object that can that has the fluid the, or the fluid particle system and then if you want to generate objects then the object can affect what the generated objects look like or their rotation, their scale, their position. So we'll quit that file and look at um, this one here. And uh, we had some smaller floaters here. And uh, interestingly enough, it seems like it affects the, the, the actual fluid simulation somewhat too. Um, and then We'll look at the third and last, I think, file that we will look at. Uh, and here I've just made one change, or a couple of changes or other. I have this backdrop here so for the render, so the render looks a little bit bigger, different. We'll look at the render later. And then, then I, I uh, assigned several materials to this so I can see, uh, see the rotation. And we can uh, play this a little bit. And uh, I have also rotated, I have animated this object. So if we go to the animation and look at the curves for it, you can see that it's, you know, turning in several dimensions at the same time. And uh, if we look at the, you know, the actual, come a little bit closer. Do this, and we play that frame by frame. You can see that the, it's rotating like that. So you, what you can see is that all the generated ones they rotate identically. You know they they're all in the same rotation, and uh, we'd like to look at this here also. You can see this object here this one there it's not touching the surface so because they have different size i think that it's the center of the object that is following the surface so if the object a little bit smaller um it will you know be above and if it's a little bit bigger it will be kind of sunk down into the surface a little bit like this one over here is, is not quite above the surface. So that's, those are my findings with this. And we will uh, take the opportunity here to look at some renders. Here you go. You can see how this, in this here, you can see how the fluid falls down and the uh, floaters sink into and then they you know, because of their buoyancy, they float back up. And uh, you can see this little one here, it stays down a little bit further. 
So there's a certain random, randomness to that. And before I close this up, I would like to show you a perspective view of the same thing. And um, we can stop that here. And uh, it looks pretty good. The fluid looks smooth and all that. And that's because I rendered this one. For, I, I usually always render to a still, to stills, like in a still um, sequence. And then I render that uh, into a video sequence or into video and I was I was I had to use AVI JPEG for my um, codec for it to turn out like this if I use the XVID which was wor worked fine for the first example because that's an XVID codec but in this case since there's seems like it there's more movement in the video it's yeah there's more surface that is changing and that's what's causing these artifacts. There are there's a lot of uh, compression artifacts actually here. So uh, that's something to take into account. You work real hard, and then you you know you render it, which takes a lot of time, and then you get these artifacts, and you go bananas over how difficult it is. And it could be just because the codec is just too too heavily compressed. So that's something to think about when it comes to to you know these. Um, simulations. I'll just quit that. So that's really all I wanted to talk about. You know, just a really brief um, uh, recap of what we talked about is that you need to have a mesh object that is the carrier of the particle system and it needs to be in the same layer otherwise the generated particles will show up or it needs to be in a visible layer because otherwise it's not going to show up. So those are really the two things. And of course that you can you can rotate, you can change the location, you can change scaling. Uh, but all the objects that are generated will behave the same way. So there's no randomness to that. So that's a good thing to know before you start. If you have like these wild plants, you're going to create this awesome looking debris field or something. You know, all the debris will be oriented the same way. So you'll have to figure out some creative ways around that if, if, if that's what you're looking for. So um, I hope this will save you some time and I hope you'll enjoy working with it if you if you have to and uh, or if you want to. I like I like the fluids. They're a little bit of a challenge though because you know you can't always do what you're thinking so you'll have to spend some time figuring it out and then it's going to take a lot of time baking and rendering so it's a kind of slow process. Anyway if you like this please share it and uh, let other people know where you can find this information. Thank you and um, I wish you a good day.